Good morning, welcome back to the 120th. I'm still in Alaska and I have been routing through Craigslist. When I'm in the UK, I do spend a bit of time keeping an eye on yeah, Facebook Marketplace, eBay, auction sites, that kind of thing. Just keeping an eye out for interesting things coming up. Within a few days of coming to uh, Anchorage, I checked out Craigslist and I found a guy who was selling he didn't actually know what they were. He just had some photos up and I thought they looked like speed graphics. I said I'd come have a look. I had a look uh, and I paid him what I think was a fair price. I told him what they were worth. This one is a four by five speed graphic in pretty good condition. Uh, it's not too bad. A little bit rough around the edges, but in, in good nick. I'm not gonna use this while I'm out here. I don't have any four x five sheet holders. Uh, I don't have any, any of the equipment that I would need to clean it up and, and get it running as I want it. So this one's just coming back to the UK with me and you will see more of that in a future video. This is the one I wanna talk about today. The guy that I bought this from didn't know what this was and if I'm honest, I wasn't 100% when I bought it either. All I knew was it looks like a speed graphic but looks a bit smaller than the usual speed graphic. So uh, I gave him an all-in price for the two cameras together. It turns out this is actually a three by four speed graphic. Um, so the size of the plate on the back here is obviously smaller than your standard four by five large format. This size is what used to be called quarter plate, I believe. This camera came with this, which is a Graflex 23 120 roll film holder and this is what I want to get get working so that slots in really simply on the back there um, everything seems to work in the film back uh, so no issues there my big problem then is how to shoot it focusing you could do with a range finder this is a range finder on the side actually a linked range finder but I would feel much more comfortable if I had some kind of ground glass so what I did this weekend just gone with my time in Alaska is I made this. It is plastic, it's just Perspex. Um, I have glued several layers, see if we can focus on that, there it is. I've glued several layers of plastic on here um, and put a bit of tape on here just to add to the, um, the, the width of it. Uh, with a view to getting this distance exactly right to fit with the exact distance between um, the, the back of the lens and the film plane as it would be in here. So I made a lot of measurements. Um, I don't have any of my usual tools with me for fixing cameras. Um, I didn't bring them with me all the way out to Alaska, surprisingly. But I have created this. And this just slots in here, like so. Cock the shutter, open that, and we then need to open this. And you should, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but you, can, you do get a pretty good image. You can see whether, which, what of that is reflection and what isn't. Anyway, long story short, I made that. It seems to work. We know from uh, our time fixing the S2A how important it is that you get the distance right from the back of the lens to the ground glass. It's absolutely essential that that measurement is exactly the same as the distance between the back of the lens and the film plane. And if it isn't, if it's out by even half a millimeter, then you are not gonna get accurate focus because what you're seeing on the ground glass and what the film plane sees will not match. So as I say, did a lot of measurement, made this, hoping it was right. Uh, then did some test shots on a roll of HP5, just here in the living room. And this is what they look like. This one is using the range finder to focus, hence the RF on the piece of paper. And this one is using the ground glass. So there we go. I have a camera that seems to be light tight. I have a film back that works and I have some means of focusing it. That's all I need. Let's get out now and take some photos with it. Right then, I have uh, driven about 25 minutes up the road to a small town called Chugiak, uh, just off the old Glen Highway. Um, and found this awesome scrapyard type place with uh, loads of old beaten up cars and called Hillside Recycling. 
uh, and they've very kindly said that I can take some photos here, so that is what I'm going to do. So I think we'll start with, I've got a bag full of film, um, let's go with an Ilford Pan F 50 ISO, start with that and see where that gets us, black and white of course. I'll keep the film back off to start with and we shall install, wait for it, my newly handmade focusing screen. There we go, there's one and two. Right then, I think we'll just start here. Sun's a little bit behind. I do not have a shade for this lens. I might put my hand over it, we shall see. Let's have a look. Let's, this is what we can see in here. You can just about get an idea. So at F8, we've got a 60th on the front of this truck here or a 50th maybe, which I think we can work with. We'll use the shutter on the lens for this one. Right, compose is the next thing to do. Cock the shutter, swap out the film back. Here we go. Out comes the dark slide. Three, two, one. Wind on again. Three, two, one. Oh. Let's wander down this way. Uh, I'm going to try and shoot some stuff a bit further away from the sun because the sun is pretty low and pretty bright. Shooting away from the sun, I'm not going to be able to see this ground glass, but there we are. One step at a time, eh? Right. So I definitely need some kind of um, hood shade for the uh, for the ground glass because I can't see anything. But I'm focused on here. I'm kind of okay with the with the composition. So let's go with this. Uh, so dark slide is out. Shutter is cocked. This is our frame. Three, two, one. Dark slide, cock the shutter, three, two, one. That oh, looks nice. Let's go with that. Uh, middle grey. All right, let's go F8 100. Three, two, one. At this point I managed to screw up my video camera settings so I didn't get any more video but these are the last shots on the Pan F. Then I put in a roll of Portra 160, started off with a mistaken double exposure, it was quite interesting. But then got some interesting shots after that. And then finished up at the scrapyard and headed to a new location. Right then, this is my next spot for the day. Um, we are down by, I believe this is called the Knick Arm. Um, the river. Now this is all obviously frozen, uh, or rather it seems frozen. There are footprints over there from where people have walked across it. Um, but it is all starting to get, it's clearly starting to get a bit thin now. The ice is getting a bit thin. Nobody walking on it today, um, but it obviously it has at some point been fully frozen over and you could have walked across it. But Alaska is melting, none more so than here. Here's the uh, camera position. I'm just gonna take a uh, photo of this bridge. Well, oh, there's some moose poo, by the way. So there obviously have been mooses near here, moose. The plural of moose is moose, I believe. Uh, still on the portra. So if composed and focused as best I can without a loop. Okay, we're going to go with a fairly high f-stop. First of all, we use the focal plane shutter, I believe. All right, so we'll do a 30th of a second at f32. Dark side out. Three, two, one. Right then, I'll just get a photo of this um, this bridge. So, let's go focal plane this time. That's ready, dark slide out. 
before the light changes. Three, two, one. Well, how about that? I am pretty chuffed with the outcome there. Uh, they're all in focus. They're all mostly properly exposed. I wasn't too disappointed with any of them. I was having some problems with the shutter towards the end of it. Um, I noticed when I was photographing that bridge that the shutter, the front shutter, the, the shutter in the lens was taking a long time to close. But as soon as I got it back, uh, it seemed to, to free up again and was moving freely. So I think it was just the cold. It's probably got some old grease in there, which is getting a bit gummy over the years and doesn't like the cold quite so much. But I'm back in the UK now, so it's not gonna be that cold. We're getting into spring, temperatures are warming up, uh, and I'm looking forward to getting this out again. I'm pretty chuffed with this, my makeshift ground glass. What I didn't explain uh, at the beginning was that this, um, what I've marked out here, is the frame. Um, that's, that's your six by nine frame from the film bag. I'm slightly concerned. I added some, some tape to give it an extra kind of tenth of a millimeter to try and get that focus precisely right. And I am slightly concerned that towards the end of that shoot, it was becoming easier and easier to fit, um, which makes me think that maybe that tape is compressing a little bit. So I'll have to keep an eye on that. But otherwise, all in all, that worked really well. And now that I'm back in the UK, uh, I can use a dark cloth and a loop of all things. So I might actually be able to focus properly. So definitely taking this one out again. I also am looking forward to trying out some different lenses in it. Of course, the Speed Graphics have uh, a focal plane shutter as well as the shutter on the lens. But it means that you can put any old lens on here. It could be a projector lens or a... Um, uh, an old brass lens that has no shutter. So instead of using the shutter at the front, you can use this. Uh, and I tested the speeds of that while I was out there. I did take my little shutter speed tester thingy um, with me to Alaska. And they're not bad, they're pretty close, you know. So there we go, good little bodge job. I'm happy with this new speed graphic that I have and the, the possibilities that it allows me. Of course, you can actually introduce front standard movements with this. I didn't go anywhere near that. I was too busy trying to uh, wonder whether I could focus properly. But that is something I could now do. I could now, I now have a camera with which I can shoot 120 film and introduce some front standard movement. So that's an interesting prospect as well. Loads more coming up on the channel, uh, not least the this this camera's big sister, the, the 4x5, which is up here on the top. I'll be getting that out at some point. I will be working on the S2A again because that seems to be not focusing properly, just for a change. Love that camera. Uh, so there'll be another video on me tinkering with the focus of the S2A. Uh, and I've got a load of other bits and bobs that should be really exciting coming up. So if you're not currently subscribed, please hit that subscribe button uh, and you will get notifications when I post those exciting videos. Uh, for all the rest of you that are subscribed, thanks for sticking with it. There are exciting things in our future together. See you next time, bye.